Welcome again to Woven Translations by Mary Kircher. In this segment, we're going to talk about how we actually weave in the journal. In the last section, we put the warp on the loom, and now we're going to talk about how we put the weft into those threads, weaving left and right or east and west. So let's get started. Let's talk about considerations for weaving. Uh, I'm going to open my journal, and I've warped that first loom page. What size yarn do you think would work best? That's always the question I get. So let's talk about yarn. These warp threads are set at eight threads in an inch. And so for weavers that is, might be meaningful in dirt determining if you're going to have a weft face where your weft yarns are covering all those warp threads. So if I look at this particular thread, it's wider than the space between the two warp threads. So that means my warp threads will show when I weave with this yarn. That one's too fat, maybe. Now this yarn, as we look at this, look at how narrow that is and how it just falls. There's space between, I can move it between those two warp threads. If I was to use this singly, it would take a long time to fill up that page. So I can absolutely use this thread, but I might double, triple, or use four strands of it while I'm weaving. This yarn, and I can't even tell you what size these are, they're just some that I've had in my stash. If I put this yarn between those two warp threads, you'll see it fits in there pretty nicely. There's not a lot of extra jiggle room, and I'm thinking that if I use a single strand of this, and maybe even two strands, that I'm going to be able to pack the yarns in as with a tapestry. So let me show you how we start weaving. So you can choose any yarn, okay? I'm going to, here I'm again using one of those bent tip needles, and I start by going under the first or second thread. So I'm going under the second thread from the right and over and under each thread. It'll all come back to you as if you were weaving pot holders as a child. And then I carry on and I'm going to bow this. And the reason that we bow it is so that our sides won't pull in. And this is very, very important. Bow that yarn like so. Now the next row, I'm going to do just the opposite. Now I'm not ambidextrous, so coming from the left side is always my tricky side. See, I don't want those threads to pull in. Just carry on. and pack that yarn down. I just use the tip of the needle. Sometimes I'll use my fingers to pack that yarn down. But see how this kind of heavy yarn? You still see the colors on my warp threads. And um, I have a tail from when I first started. Now I want to take that tail and just stuff it behind the other threads. It's kind of long. I'm going to cut a bit off but it'll stay just fine since there's no abrasion on the back side of your weaving. It's just whatever you're doing here. And then I carry on. So that last one was under, so I'm going under the second this time. And just do just the opposite of what you did on the first time. Also, if I used this heavy yarn, and I'll show you on the way back, I could go over two and under two. And then it would pack in just lovely. So the point is, if this is new to you, experiment. Okay, let's see, I've got this all packing in. Nice and tight there. Now, this time around, I'm going to go under two and over two. And let's see what happens. We're going to do a couple rows of that. And I think you'll quickly see what I'm talking about if I want something to be weft dominant, like a tapestry or if you like to see those warp threads. And that's the great thing about this, is you can do it however you want, whatever your designs call for. Let's 
see that all right? Now, this time around, I'm going over that first one, then under two, over two, under two, over two. Pretty quickly, you're going to start seeing how I'm going to do one more row. Quite frankly, I typically will do this in my lap, and I turn this book whichever direction I need in order to get the right angle for my hands. Now, do you notice these last three rows? We're really not starting to lose that, oops, that warp. Sometimes I wish my needles were about, oh, two inches longer. Just go right over that knot. But as I pack this in, it's fully covering those warp threads right in here. So. Here we see it single, here we see it going over and under, and that's how I might use a nice fat yarn. Okay, now you'll notice I did a few more rows, and you can see how that fat yarn going over to and under to really packed in. Now I'm going to take some of this yellow yarn and try using that. And you can see it's very thin, so I'm going to use four strands of this. One, two, here's three, and four. Now put all four strands through the needle, like so. Now I've got a fatter yarn to start weaving with. And I'm going to go back to over and under each individual thread here. So let's do break up that pattern and you'll see pretty quickly that even with all these strands and you'll that I bet it'll work fairly close. The other thing I suggest is picking up your warp threads higher up away from the yarn and that way you can see your threads more easily than if you're working right close. Now this might not look like much until we get a few rows in here. I'll tuck that back later. Now over and under just opposite what we did before with the last row. Remember the bow? And this is packing in fairly nice. Let's give it another row or two and see what happens. I might have made it too thick. Okay, I've just done six picks. A pick is a thread going in one direction and you can see that with the um, four strands of yellow and it packs down where it mostly covers those warp threads. So you get the idea of how you can use different yarns to your advantage. So at this point I say go ahead and start weaving with yarn and experiment. If you're interested in doing things that are more pictorial you may want to consider getting a tapestry book or taking one of my classes to um, further understand how to do um, other designs. The other thing I want to show you today is woven collage. So here I'm taking a wrapper 
as you know, I'm big on weaving with wrappers and so forth, and I'm slicing up my paper. It can be any width, any length, skinny ones, fat ones. Okay, now I've got my strips. I can mix them up, do whatever I want. And now I've got to figure out how to get them to go into my woven, my weaving board here. So let's start out with, oh, do I want it in order or not? Maybe I'll start out with something just a little bit fatter. Much like what we were doing with the other um, is over and under, and I'm going to just carry on where I left off here, is um, I'm going to use a fat needle for this. So here every other yarn, one, two, three, is going up and opposite from before. And I pull that up, one, there we go. You see, I'm pulling every other thread up so that I can scoot that little bit of wrapper right through here. And sometimes it just takes a little finger pushing to get it through there. And however you can get it through is what I recommend. <laughs> Ta-da! Woven collage. Almost. And just scoot that down. Okay. And let's try a second piece. Mm. I'm going to go on from the same side, just from the angle that I'm working today. And this is where you can take all those little, you know, those little bits of papers and memorabilia that you have. And it's just sort of fun to put it together in some way that is perhaps a little bit different than, say, a scrapbook. Because you can always write about these memory things here. And I've been known to put entire, fill up a whole piece and then surround it by other bits of thread and things like that. Just... Um, I don't always need the entire ticket or the receipt from a show, for example. There you have it. Strips of paper that quickly turn into a collage. All right, so you get the general idea. I'm not going to uh, bore you with any more, but carry on trying other strips of paper, leaves, sticks, more yarn, and you'll find it's a fun, fun way to uh, capture your memories and inspirations. So we just talked about how to do our weaving in the weaving journal. And these are some really basic things. If you're interested in getting more detail about how to do more pictorial things with yarn, pick up a tapestry book. Um, and you'll find all kinds of ideas on how to get those shapes in um, using a couple colors um, in a single row. The other thing is for the, um, I showed you some samples in my original journals of some woven collage, but I've got lots more examples. If you go to Woven Translations by Mary Kircher on my Facebook page, you'll find an album in there with uh, weaving journal classes. And this is work from my students, and it's incredible. It's imaginative and um, you'll get many great ideas if you don't already have a bunch. So check out my Facebook page, uh, Woven Translations by Mary Kircher. And thanks again.